All right, I'm John Thomas, the mad hedge fund trader, legend in my own mind. I'll get into my background in a few minutes. Uh, welcome to the second day of the Mad Hedge Trading and Investment Summit. We have eight excellent speakers today, everyone coming on the hour, everyone with their own special offers, their education. Uh, and of course, we have $33,000 in free prizes to give away today. So uh, let's get on with the show. Today, I'm going to talk about Bitcoin for the next hour, playing the next bull market. We, we already had several bull markets in Bitcoin in the last couple of years. And those who caught the last one made a fortune. Those who bought it at the top had their heads handed to them. But, you know, welcome to trading uh, highly volatile instruments. So... Bitcoin, the next investment of the century. We're having a break now. We've peaked in November at uh, just under 69,000. We are plumbing the lows right now along with the rest of the small cap technology stocks. They don't go down forever. And uh, the next move probably is likely uh, to deliver us either a double or a triple. So how would you like to buy Facebook at $20? Apple at 25 cents or Amazon at five dollars. Uh, this is the performance on those stocks. I actually did buy at all these prices, but I sold a little bit too soon. You know, sold sold my original Amazon at 10. I had a double. You know, what can I say? Who knew what Jeff Bezos was gonna do? As for Steve Jobs, it was the same. I still have some of that Apple stock at 25 cents though have it parked away in one of my distant retirement funds. And uh, Facebook, I got out, out of very early and never went back, but you had spectacular returns on all those stocks. Uh, Facebook looks like it just went straight up forever all the way until the middle of this year. Um, it's dropped by nearly half since then. Apple um, starting to break down, uh, broke the 200 day moving average yesterday. But, you know, 25 cents to 183, that's pretty good performance. And Amazon, same deal, uh, $10 up to 3,500. Bitcoin, on the other hand, went from uh, one one hundredth of a cent to just short of 70,000. So it has outperformed the major tech stocks from the low by a factor of 100 at least. If you entry points, you now have another shot by Bitcoin today or somewhere on the next dip. Is this generation with a total market value of $1 trillion has become too big to fail? Institutional banks driving prices higher. It is the ultimate play on global liquidity which will continue for years, if not decades. Its adoption was greatly accelerated by the pandemic, as were all other new technologies. Ultimately, Bitcoin could rise from 50 times the current level, equaling the entire value of the global money supply. So let's, let's go flying over the Malibu coast. Um, see, oops, we... Pop back there for a second. This technology is always uh, when you're operating at the edge of the envelope, things don't always work. So let's try that again. Oops, not doing it again. Yeah. Okay, so why listen to John? Very markets. Ten years. Later, White House, 10 years running the International Equity Division at Morgan Stanley. A uh, brief time out as a Marine Corps combat pilot in Desert Storm. 10 years in Texas. 14 years publishing the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader. I am one of a handful of founders of the modern hedge fund industry who is still working. Take my half century of trading experience and add it to your own. Learn from my mistakes so you don't have to repeat them. And believe me, there have been plenty 
Oh, and if you ever need to ride in a hundred year old biplane over the coast of Malibu on the Pacific Ocean, I'm your man. Uh, so if you're going to uh, spend the next hour with me, it's best to find out who I am. My family origins were very humble, growing up as the oldest of seven children on a remote farm in Southern California. I lived the all-American childhood playing Little League baseball and becoming an Eagle Scout. Uh, there wasn't much to do in rural California in the old days but hunting, so I picked up a job as a paper boy for the Los Angeles Herald Examiner. I found the stock pages, bought IBM at 20, sold it at 30, and suddenly found a far better way to make money than delivering newspapers off the back of a bicycle. By the time I was 16, I earned enough money to fly to Europe. By the age of 17, I'd visited more than 50 countries and spoke four languages. And that's one of the first newspapers I delivered covering the Kennedy assassination in 1963. At UCLA, I majored in math and DNA research, which landed me a job at the nuclear test site in Nevada. Their yield didn't mean interest paid, but millions of Russians killed. I didn't see a future in that, so the government sent me to Southeast Asia for a few years of intelligence missions where I learned how to fly and jump out of perfectly good airplanes. As the war wound down, I became a foreign correspondent for The Economist magazine in London. When they learned I had a math degree, they switched me over to covering the Asian economy and the stock market. Ta-da, stock market. And after 10 years of government service, all I got was this box of medals, which I trot out once a year on Veterans Day. As a foreign correspondent, I covered China during the Cultural Revolution, was the first American reporter to visit North Korea since the Korean War. And if you're wondering why I'm so skinny in this picture, it's because China was then having a famine where 50 million people died, which they never actually admitted to. Um, there's my uh, commercial pilot's license and uh, covering uh, the South Pacific uh, when it got bored, boring on Saturday nights, we used to find old World War II bombs, set fire to them and run like hell. That's entertainment on Saipan. I figured out very quickly, you didn't have to be that smart to make money in the stock market. So I got into the industry joining Morgan Stanley. After 10 years, I started my own hedge fund. I rapidly became the top performing hedge fund of the 1990s, eventually bringing in a 1,000% return in a decade. Then the money really started to pour in. It's an understatement to say that when the, your income goes from the thousands to the tens of millions, it really has a big impact on your lifestyle. You get to buy the latest hot car, uh, fly your own private plane around Europe, uh, go marlin fishing in Mexico, and collect vintage Rolls Royces. I sold my hedge fund in 2000, retired to go into the oil and gas industry. After making a killing there, I missed the stock market and started the Diary of a Mad Hedge Fund Trader in 2008. I now spend my days pursuing my first love, finding winning trade alerts, but I now do it from my three mansions in San Francisco, Lake Tahoe, and Zermatt, Switzerland. There's far more satisfaction in leveling the playing field for the average guy and teaching them how to trade, and that includes you. If I can take a $50,000 account, turn it into $500,000, that is more job satisfaction than I could ever get anywhere else. However, every silver lining has a cloud. This is my tax return from 2020, and it shows I paid $8 million in taxes on $20 million in trading income. Yikes. I just... I just uh, fall down on my knees and thank goodness it doesn't affect my lifestyle to pay that kind of tax bill. In the little free time I have left, I pursue my other life, uh, my other love, flying vintage aircraft on weekends. That's my old 1932 Tiger Moth, which I used to have in Cambridge, England. This is a 1947 Chipmunk, which used to be the basic uh, trainer for the Royal Air Force. If you see an old plane flying loops over San Francisco or London these days, it's probably me. As a Marine Corps veteran, I volunteer for grief counseling for widows and orphans and am a major donor to wounded warriors. 
When the wildfires hit California, I visited the main evacuation centers uh, and handed out $10,000 worth of Target gift cards. You can see I'm up there at my in-laws house, uh, uh, which completely burned to the ground, nothing left. They used this SIF box to look for a wedding ring, which they eventually found because platinum has a much higher melting point than gold. That's one of the little tidbits you learn after trading commodities for 50 years. Uh, so what is Bitcoin? It is a unique piece of computer code that you alone own. It's millions of lines long. It can be bought, sold, or parked in a deposit account. Bitcoin does not pay interest or dividends nor exist in any physical form, although you uh, can find private parties that will pay interest uh, on Bitcoin. The outstanding value of all cryptocurrencies soared from over a few thousand dollars in 2009 to over one trillion today. The early days were plagued with hackers, theft, con men, and frequent 80% declines. Greater institutional participation has made it respectable, safer, and more secure. The larger the value, the more security and the more regulation. The IRS estimates there are about a trillion dollars in unrealized and unreported crypto profits. To capture these digital profits, Form 1099 reports will become mandatory from this year. Hide your Bitcoin trading at your own peril. Your broker will turn you in because they are re required to report your Bitcoin trading income to the IRS. Um, where did Bitcoin come from? Miners search for unique blocks of computer code, effectively copyright them and sell them to the Bitcoin network. And by the way, I am a node in the Bitcoin network myself. So I get to see what all the transactions look like and who is buying and selling. It's a very time, power and storage intensive process with costs rising constantly now at about $12,000 per Bitcoin. So it's safe to assume we won't ever drop below 12,000 again because nobody will uh, mine coins for a loss. In fact, nobody will, it's unlikely we'll ever get below 15,000 because nobody will work without a profit. 19 million Bitcoin have been mined so far or about 900 a day with a final limit of only 21 million Bitcoin allowed by the code. Most miners used to be in China, but after a government crackdown, most of them have migrated to the US and Canada. Uh, what is blockchain? It's a word you hear quite a lot about these days. Blockchain is a decentralized ledger system that keeps track of who owns what in the Bitcoin universe. It stores all the unique codes created by independent miners. It is hosted on 10,000 independently owned computer nodes. Uh, nodes are fully transparent and visible to all to keep the system honest. That's when I say everybody is uh, uh, can see everything who's inside the network. Uh, a Bitcoin is kind of like a dollar bill, except it uh, has the name and address of everyone who's ever owned it. That's why the people who steal Bitcoin have great difficulty actually spending it because um, everything is traceable. Blockchain technology underlying Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have been described as a potential game changer for a large number of industries from shipping and supply chains to banking and healthcare. By removing intermediaries uh, from computer networks, distributed ledgers can facilitate new types of economic activity that were not possible before. Uh, cryptocurrencies are built using blockchain technology. Blockchain describes the way transactions are recorded into blocks and time stamped. The result is a digital ledger of cryptocurrency transactions that's impossible for hackers to tamper with and everybody can see. Transactions require a unique two-factor authentication process for example, you might be asked to enter a username and a password to start a transaction, then you might have to enter an authentication code that's sent via text to your personal cell phone. Uh, Bitcoin can be converted into any other currency at any time, such as the US dollar, the euro, or the Australian dollar using a number of third-party apps. It can also be broken down into fractional units to pay for day-to-day -day purchases, 
such as through, through PayPal. Um, in El Salvador, people are paying for Starbucks with Bitcoin. By the way, El Salvador has completely converted their national currency over to Bitcoin. Uh, in August, PayPal announced it was accepting Bitcoin and five other cryptocurrencies for investment and settlement of purchases, greatly enhancing its acceptance as a digital currency. Uh, the final supply of gold is infinite, while Bitcoin is fixed at 21 million. Physical transfers of gold is risky, tedious, and expensive, while Bitcoin is digital and moved with the click of a mouse. Gold is heavy, while Bitcoin is weightless. Thus, Bitcoin is rapidly replacing gold as a hedge and flight to safety instrument, rising 400% uh, in the last year versus a, uh, a, an 8% loss for gold. Uh, here's the chart of gold uh, for the last 18 months. You can see we absolutely flatlined for all of 2021. Didn't start to get to move up until the commodities in general exploded this year. Bitcoin, on the other hand, different story. Uh, we went from 5,000 in 20, 2020, all the way up to 70,000 uh, in November, and we've given up about half of that since. So not a bad entry point here. Uh, and you can see, as I mentioned, it's unlikely we'll ever get any more mining and sales uh, below 15,000. Uh, we're right about 38,000 right now. Uh, there are risks with Bitcoin. Uh, anybody who bought at the November high will tell you uh, $3.5 billion in Bitcoin was stolen in 2016. It was only recently recovered with the arrest of a young couple in New York. Turns out they could only spend the money $500 at a time by using Walmart gift cards. That rate would take forever to get through $3.5 billion. Most theft is not through Bitcoin network itself, but via third party access, such as through cell phones and fish passwords. Uh, and it's, it's a classic phishing technique, how they gain access. They'll, they'll send a, uh, an email to you uh, from your uh, Bitcoin broker uh, asking you to log into your account. It's really that simple. Thousands of people pay for it. Uh, fall for it every year and fuels a massive global criminal operation. Uh, hacking and theft are a constant risk and there is no Bitcoin customer support. If you call your broker, find out why your uh, account has been cleaned out and it's because somebody stole your password, they can't help you. There's nothing they can do for you. Uh, by the way, that's me at the top of Mount Rose. That's Lake Tahoe on the right, standing at about uh, 12,000 feet there. Uh, there are ways to mitigate your risk. U.S. expert firewall intermediaries are the answer. Many stocks and ETFs have the security resources you can only dream about and are essentially theft-proof. Let the middleman take all the hacking risk while tracking Bitcoin by 96%. Uh, what's a crypto wallet? Well, a crypto wallet is a place to store your Bitcoin and come in hot and cold versions. Cold wallets on a personal device are the safest as they are not connected to the internet and unhackable and can be stored in a safe deposit box or a safe. Uh, however, uh, cold wallets I recommend only for actual computer programmers who have the savvy uh, to manage this thing. Uh, you forget your password, it's gone forever. And by the way, there's thought to be billions of dollars of lost Bitcoin uh, with the passwords uh, in various computer devices, phones that have been lost or sitting in dumps somewhere. Uh, this is where you store your the key code unique to your own Bitcoin holdings. It's gonna all be skipped by going with a secure Bitcoin intermediary like an ETF. And there's about a half a dozen of those out now. Uh, ransomware attacks against major US corporations require five to $10 million payments in Bitcoin to restart operations. All the payments are paid in Bitcoin. In May last year, the Colonial Pipeline was shut down for a week, cutting off the US East Coast gasoline supply till a $5 million ransom was paid.
Most large companies now keep many millions worth of Bitcoins on the books just to make quick purchases in a hurry to reopen operations, further increasing demand for the cryptocurrency. Uh, the first Bitcoin ETF was launched in Canada. It was the uh, BTCC.TO. Uh, and uh, it was really very simple. The uh, ETF bought the Bitcoin. You bought shares in the ETF. They were responsible for security. And it worked out pretty well. And we also got a tracking rate of exactly 96% with the underlying Bitcoin, the rest being accounted for by management and accounting fees. So who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Those who get into the weeds on this thing see this name cropping up all the time. Uh, Satoshi Nakamoto is a person or a group of people who wrote the original 2009 white paper on Bitcoin. It's very easy to read. It's only nine pages long. Just Download it on the internet and read it for yourself, and that'll give you some insights into what Bitcoin actually is. He or they oversee rule changes regarding the tens of thousands of Bitcoin miners. No, I am not Satoshi Nakamoto myself, although I do speak Japanese, Nihongo Hanashimasyo. Uh, Bitcoin is the end of the natural evolution of money. We started out with barter, you know, I'll trade you a cow for a couple bushels of wheat. Then we moved on to gold coins uh, uh, during the ancient civilizations, but people used to cut little pieces off of them and they eventually get smaller and smaller. Then we got metal coins, you know, copper, silver, amalgams. Then we went on to paper money, credit cards, electronic money, and now we have cryptocurrency the grand finale. And the way this probably ends is we end up with a single cryptocurrency. Uh, Bitcoin has been adopted faster than the internet and smartphones, becoming a major asset class in only 12 years. Emerging economies such as Vietnam, India, and Pakistan with the weakest currencies have led to the crypto adoption. This essentially means this is a global phenomenon with capital pouring in from all corners of the world. And uh, if you look at the percentage of use of transactions uh, by countries, it's always those with the weakest currencies, Vietnam, India, and Pakistan topping the list. Uh, and even Ukraine was at 29%. By the way, the people in the Ukraine and Russia who put their money into Bitcoin uh, had their bacon saved because their currencies crashed by more than 50% with the onset of the war. As Bitcoin grew in popularity and gained more acceptance, users began to notice some of its shortcomings. As a result, alternative cryptocurrencies, often referred to as altcoins, were launched to fix its perceived flaws in areas such as privacy, transaction speed, DNS resolution, and proof of stake, among others. Bitcoin itself is kind of code heavy, so others like Ethereum uh, have arisen that are much more code efficient and have other benefits. Some of the most popular alternative currencies are Ethereum, Cordana, Ripple, Zcash, Litecoin, Monero, Avalanche, and Dash. Uh, there are currently more than 1,500 cryptocurrencies. And of course, there's also Dogecoin, which is Elon Musk's favorite and he's constantly causing gyrations in that cryptocurrency. High net worth Wells Fargo clients cannot get Bitcoin and crypto exposure. Investment Research Division of Wells Fargo Wealth and Investment Management implemented an actively managed Bitcoin and crypto strategy for its qualified investors. The firm's wealth and investment management arm oversees about $2 trillion in assets making them among the largest wealth managers in the United States. President of Wells Fargo Investment Institute says, we think the crypto space has just kind of hit an evolution and maturation of its development that allows it now to be a viable investable asset. Printing presses are running wild in Washington. US Federal Reserve has been printing new money at a 30% annual rate to stimulate the economy for something like 10 years now, just a matter of time before massive overissuance creates 
high inflation and the devaluation of the US dollar. Bitcoin will appreciate at the dollar's expense. Bitcoin is the new flight to safety currency. Uh, Jay Powell says Bitcoin is a highly speculative asset, but they have a team of researchers closely following it, looking at new ways to monitor and regulate uh, Bitcoin as a full-fledged financial asset. Uh, as the infrastructure bill that brought a great deal of attention to Washington, D.C. on the regulatory oversight of crypto, uh, Congress has seen 18 bills that have been introduced that directly impact cryptocurrencies, blockchain technology, or central bank digital currencies. All have failed so far, but it's just a matter of time before the government gets into direct regulation of cryptocurrencies. This means that they aren't getting rid of crypto, they just wanna know how to properly tax it and become the de facto gatekeepers of the asset class. In fact, cryptocurrency regulation has been a frequent point of interest lately for US lawmakers and government agencies. Um, let's see, uh, the infrastructure bill made reference to it and there have also been hearings uh, in the Senate and the House uh, grilling the head of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Gary Gensler, uh, about their role in regulating digital assets. This means higher crypto prices if the rules and regulations for investors uh, in the framework of the US government is laid out clearly. These events are highly bullish for the underlying digital assets. Holding cryptocurrencies is one of the best ways to protect yourself from the onslaught of the coming devaluation of the US dollar. The end result will be a precipitous decline in the purchasing power for most Americans. It's not a new thing, it's been going on for centuries. We are in the process of de-risking crypto and this journey will eventually remove the volatility out of this asset class. This will happen once adoption accelerates. Bitcoin has a program shrinking supply. While the US dollar uh, supply money is increasing by 30% a year, and the, uh, there is no limit on the number of dollars that the US government can issue, Bitcoin supply is fixed at only 21 million. With demand increasing and supply fixed, prices can go, only go up over the long term. New supply of Bitcoin declines every four years through events called halvings. Uh, the third having took place in March 2020, and the next one is in 2024. Having means that the number of new Bitcoin that can be issued drops by half every four years. Global fixed income markets have $150 trillion yielding near zero looking for a new home. Bitcoin is the only place for them to go. Bond purchasing power goes to zero over time. And you can see, uh, depending on your assumed interest rate, uh, this is how fast the purchasing power uh, of U.S. Of, of German boons through time, uh, through different inflation scenarios. And of course, the worst case, 5% a year inflation has uh, the uh, boons dropping by 90% in value uh, over the next 30 years. Uh, U.S. bonds are very overvalued on almost all metrics, uh, and I've been broadly bullish on Bitcoin for the past two years, says my old friend Jeffrey Goonlock of uh, Double Line Capital uh, down in Los Angeles. So it, Bitcoin is also uh, a great inflation hedge, uh, no matter which currency you look at. Bitcoin is outperforming over the long term, be it uh, the euro, the Japanese yen, or the Australian dollar. CEOs are now issuing bonds and piling into these low cost borrowed funds uh, into cryptocurrencies, searching for asset appreciation. The end result is the cryptocurrencies are now integrated into the balance sheets, some of the most prominent public companies, such as Tesla, PayPal, and Square. Uh, there's also a millennial effect going on here. Millennials are growing in, into their biggest spending years and continue to believe that the key to securing their future is investing in cryptocurrencies. Millennials will see the great 
great wealth creation of any generation over the next decade. Nearly half of millennial millionaires have at least 25% of the wealth in cryptocurrencies. The results highlight a new generational divide in wealth creation from crypto with younger investors able to earn vast fortunes from the surge in prices of crypto. Millennial crypto buyers outnumber Gen X buyers by 15 and a half to one and boomers by 63 to one. Uh, and here's the use of crypto by generation with of course, Gen Z's at the top uh, and uh, we boomers at the very bottom. In March, Morgan Stanley was first among banks to offer Bitcoin funds to its clients. Goldman Sachs quickly followed with announcement of its own. Cultural divides will no longer be defined by red or blue, white collar, blue collar, educated, uneducated, but crypto owners and non-crypto owners. I'm happy to say, say I'm one of the crypto owners. You're competing to buy a house against a crypto owner. You are toast because they can outbid you uh, uh, no matter how much the price is. More than 60% of Robinhood users traded crypto uh, last year and accounted for about $233 million. 62% of that was from Dogecoin alone in revenue compared to 5 million in the previous year, according to its quarterly earnings reports. Uh, these are the top 10 institutional owners of crypto. It's my old client list from Morgan Stanley. Uh, Standard Chartered, Bank of New York Mellon, Citibank, UBS, and so on. All the big boys are getting in. Uh, Bitcoin has entered an exponential uh, growth phase. Don't miss the golden chance to create generational wealth. Bitcoin, with its 21 million supply cap, is often touted as the ultimate hedge against inflation. This is because increasing demand for the crypto asset will uh, never cause its total supply to expand beyond the 21 million cap. Uh, the Bitcoin bull bulls will soon be back in charge and the handoff couldn't have come too soon for cryptocurrency investors. The coming rally has put the wind back in the sails of a market that continues to prove its resilience in the face of any and every headwind. The cold hard truth is that since 2021, many young people have even put 90% of their liquid net worth into Bitcoin, which is even considered conservative in crypto land. So-called generational divide is playing out as we speak, in which the baby boomers, meanwhile, believe that Bitcoin is the riskiest asset out there, which is hardly the truth anymore. So Bitcoin targets some for 100,000 by the end of 2023, targeting 500,000 by 2025. And then ask me again, because we'll be entering uncharted waters. Is a 10X return enough in five years for you? I am highly bullish on Bitcoin for the long term. Crypto is mainstream and that won't change. So here's why I'm not gonna charge you for my Bitcoin service, $100,000. That's what I charge my big hedge one client and they're happy to pay because I make them millions of dollars. And I'm not gonna charge you $10,000. That's what I charge my concierge clients who get my personal cell phone number so I can be their investment 911. And I'm not gonna charge you $1,499. That's the full price of what I'm offering you on my website. Uh, this is the real deal. Creating this product cost me millions of dollars with the best customer service in the industry running it cost me millions more. Here's the offer you can't refuse, one year for just $995. That's a 33% discount. Just click on the chat box on the right. That'll take you to our dedicated sales page uh, where um, uh, you can take advantage of this offer. With the Mad Hedge Bitcoin letter, you get instant trade alerts and add up market sweet spots and all the reasons to execute them. Live by weekly strategy webinars like this one on all asset classes with an interactive Q&A, special reports on urgent investment topics, more educational videos and webinars than you can consume in a lifetime and access to a 14 year database on investment ideas 
searchable by names and ticker symbols. Uh, this is my Mad Hedge Bitcoin letter. It comes out twice a week uh, where, where we make the strategic calls and give you the regulatory updates on Bitcoin. Uh, you also get my Mad Hedge Hot Tips, which comes out every day. Uh, these are the five most important things that happened in the market and what you should do about them. Let me make the fun money for you to pay for your own subscription. You make the trades. Discover how an experienced hedge fund manager finds and exploits the best sweet spots in the Bitcoin market. We only take 25 new subscribers at a time, so it's first come, first serve. I can't wait to make you a top drawer Bitcoin trader. Click on the chat box on the right. Let me make the money for you to pay. Uh, just click on the chat box on the right. Buy now and you will instantly receive a trade alert with an extremely high probability of success that you can execute immediately and make some of the most serious money in your life. Don't leave money on the table. 95% of these trades make money. Uh, just to give you a tease, uh, this is the chart of the trade alert that you will get immediately and can execute immediately because the markets um, will open in about an hour. Uh, and you can take advantage of this trade. Uh, so let's go flying again. Here we are back over the Malibu coast and my 100-year-old airplane. When you make millions of dollars for your clients, you get a lot of pretty interesting invitations. $5,000 cases of wine, lunches on super yachts, free tickets to the Olympics, and dates with movie stars, and I promise not to tell who. So it was in that spirit that I made my way down to the famed beachside community of Malibu to meet my uh, long-term Mad Hitch follower, Richard Zeiler. Richard is a man after my own heart, plowing his millions in trading profits into a ground-up restoration of a 1929 Travelair D4D biplane. This particular plane is quite famous because it was featured in a 1930 war movie, Hell's Angels, which won one of the first Academy Awards. However, Richard had to buy 20 other travelers to get the parts he needed to return this one plane to flying condition. The modernized plane has a 300 horsepower engine, carries 62 gallons of fuel, and can fly 550 miles. Since I'm one of the few living tailwheel qualified pilots left in America, Richard was happy to let me have the plane for an afternoon where me and my kids buzz the surfers and camper vans on the California coast. Let me make millions of dollars for you as well as I've done for thousands of others over the last 14 years. I look forward to working with all of you. And here is a Shot from the uh, this is the travel air I flew. Uh, some beat up looking condition plane of the camera bolted to the back of it, which we used to make the movie. Uh, here's the offer you can't refuse today and only through this webinar one year for just $995. Click on the chat box on the right, uh, and that'll take you to our dedicated sales page. So, um Let's see. So, uh, da, 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 da. so uh, I've got some extra time here to take some questions um, and uh, just put them in the chat box on the right. And uh, let's see how we can get that up. Uh, let's see, chat right there. And let me go through questions. Um, here's one from Craig with China cracking down on Bitcoin and making it illegal to mine in country in order to replace it with their own new vote virtual currency. Do you for, foresee any adverse effects in virtual currency space overall? I do not. Uh, China is a very high risk place to mine and, you know, you have the choice of, uh, buying a currency backed by the Chinese government or buying a cryptocurrency backed by its own independent network. I'm not so sure the Chinese government is all that uh, 
trustworthy. You can count on them to ma manipulate markets whenever it suits their advantage. So I'll take the uh, existing Bitcoin network all day long against anything China has to offer. And the reason the markets, I said the markets are not open yet, because I haven't updated my clock in my office uh, for, for uh, summertime. Uh, okay, another question here. Um, let's see, just reading through here. Um, okay. Okay, we, I will be announcing the first batch of today's 33,000 dollars in prizes uh, in about 10 minutes. So hang on if you want to find out who that is. Okay, uh, da, 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 just reading more questions. Is Bitcoin too fail to too big to fail? And the answer is it is. Uh, at, you know the total market uh, value is over a trillion dollars now. Uh, and while there will be no government Bitcoin, uh, there will always be more larger institutional long-term investors uh, that come in on any decline. Uh, because Bitcoin has value, it can be converted into other currencies and used to buy real things. Uh, and it's, uh, somebody says your Bitcoin is not systematically important in any way, but no currency is. And most currencies in the past have been subject to violent uh, corrections, even the U.S. dollar. If you look at the purchasing power of the U.S. dollar since it was issued, it's down by about 99% since the first dollar was issued in 1782. So uh, if the benchmark is another asset that declines by 99%, that's, that's such a high bar to cover. And how do I enter for a prize? Uh, the second you registered for this webinar, uh, you are automatically um, entered in for the prizes. <laughs> okay, reading more questions here. Thank you for putting your time and effort putting up this seminar. Not able to attend the first day. Uh, all speakers are being recorded and all 24 of us will have their uh, presentations available to you next week. Uh, also the links to the special offers will still be good. So come back to madhedge.com next week. You can listen to anybody you want to at your leisure. Uh, and then uh, yesterday, John mentioned close to 90% returns uh, in 2021. Was that stock or options? Answer, that was in options, mostly call spreads. Um, but um, every single trailer we sent out gives you three choices uh, to execute uh, a stock, an option, or an ETF. That way people can tailor the trade alerts to meet their own experience levels and risk tolerance. Uh, okay, da, da, da. here's somebody who wants to hear more Pink Floyd. <laughs> uh, just turn on your iTunes, that's all it takes. Uh, okay, somebody says, awesome, they missed yesterday too. Uh, um, uh, I want to invest in crypto, but don't know which site I can trust to soar. Uh, just go with one of the uh, main uh, New York brokers like Coinbase. They will store your Bitcoin for you. They have uh, $3 billion in capital backing them. I have a Coinbase account. That's where I keep my crypto. I don't want to miss with cold wallets and private keys and all of that. Uh, so... Um, that is the way to go there. Okay, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Somebody says they're watching all this on their phone. Actually, about 40% of our followers now only use our service through their phone. So everything we, we put out is optimized for telephones. Okay, just let me take a quick look and see uh, how close we're getting. Oh boy, look at this. How close we're getting uh, to 25 limits. And uh, let's see, we have Rodney from Sydney, Australia has just come into the Mad Hedge Bitcoin letter. Uh, thank you very much, Rodney. Uh, and by the way, as an extra bonus, 
I will throw in for buyers my book on the Mad Hedge Guide to Trading Bitcoin. Everything you ever needed to know about uh, trading Bitcoin, all the fundamentals, the background, the structure of the system, and so on. Uh, I didn't include a page on this, but uh, uh, we might as well give it out to people so they have a real foundation on how the Bitcoin mechanics actually work how to execute trades and how to avoid all the risks. Okay, we had Jay from St. Petersburg, Florida just came in. Thank you very much, Jay. And the uh, trade alert for Bitcoin should be in your inbox right now. All these things are fully automated. So uh, we will get you that. Uh, you should already be in your inbox. If you don't find it in your box, just look in your junk folder. That's often where stuff ends up for brand new services. Uh, we have Karen from Cody, Wyoming, just bought. Eric from Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, let me go down here and take a look. Uh, all the confirms are coming in. Uh, we have uh, Sheldon from Thomasville, Georgia. Thank you very much, Sheldon. Let me open another one. Um, let's see. We've got a bunch of these, actually, that just came in. Okay, let me read this. Uh, we have Thomas from Burr Ridge, Illinois. We have, let's see, uh, Kari from Plano, Texas. And we have da, 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 Robert from Odessa, Florida has come in. Uh, okay, we... We're getting close to our 25 limit. The store will automatically shut off when we hit it. So if you're sitting on the fence, kind of hemming and hawing, get your order in. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait three more months uh, for our next summit to uh, take advantage of this price. Or you can pay the full $1,500 price on your website. I'm more than happy to do that. Uh, OK, let's see if any more questions came in. Um, uh, here's an excellent question. Uh, will the end of QE, which ended on Friday, uh, hurt Bitcoin over the long term? Uh, and the answer is no. Uh, wider adoption of Bitcoin as a currency and store of value is the main driver of Bitcoin prices. The more uh, institutional investors and hedge funds who come in, uh, the more stability you get and the more long-term price appreciation you get. Because remember, the amount of Bitcoin is fixed. Uh, interest rates uh, and Federal Reserve purchases in the bond market don't really affect the value of Bitcoin. Uh, okay, any other questions? Uh, okay. Uh, here's somebody. I'm worried about the stock market. Uh, how much... Further, do you see things falling from here? Uh, answer is my prediction since the beginning of the year uh, was a worst case scenario of down 20%. That takes us down from uh, S&P 500 of 4,800 down to uh, 3,840 worst case. And even then the last 5% may be an intraday spike that you reverse and bring back up uh, into the 400. So uh, we're getting close to buy territory. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, expect volatility to continue. Uh, expect atrocities in Ukraine to cause more down 500 point or down 1,000 point days. Uh, and don't forget the Federal Reserve raises interest rates tomorrow for the first time in five years. So. Plenty of things for stocks to, to worry about, but we're coming to the end of this thing. 25% uh, of all the stocks in the market are down 50% or more from the peak a year ago. Uh, okay, let's see more questions here. Um, uh, do you, uh, let's see, Jenner is asking, do you purchase actual Bitcoin or the ETF? Um, I purchased the ETFs myself because it brings an extra level of security. And, you know, me being a baby boomer, I may forget my password or lose it. 
uh, if you have, uh, that's not a problem with uh, uh, the big brokers like Coinbase. You forget your password there, you just reset your password. Uh, you forget your password uh, with a cold wallet, it's gone forever. You'll never get it back. Uh, and probably as much as 10% of all Bitcoin will never be spent because the passwords are lost or the owners, you know, the people who had the passwords died. You know, there was one guy who had the passwords on $250 million worth of, of Bitcoin and he died and the, nobody can get at, get at it at all. Uh, okay. Um, let's see. Da, 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 looking for more questions. Um, when will the elections uh, start to affect the market? And usually September uh, is when we affect the market. And uh, the winner of the election will be determined by the inflation rate in September, the level of the stock market, the current state of the war in the Ukraine, uh, and uh, the rate of recent wage increases by working Americans, which are now the highest in 40 years. Uh, okay. D -d 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 um, uh, here's somebody else pointing out that they think the total amount of lost Bitcoin is something like 20% of outstanding. Uh, you can't get a precise number on this. Uh, all you can determine is the number of Bitcoin that have never traded since inception that you can get from the network. Uh, and I would not be surprised if it's 20% or more because a lot of the devices that were created in 2009 when Bitcoin started no longer exist uh, or uh, even the software to support those systems don't exist. So if your password is in there, it's likely gone for good. Okay, taking more questions here. Um, Da, da, da. Uh, here's a good one. Can a basic beginner who's never traded before get into the Bitcoin market and make money? And the answer is yes, but only if you have a professional uh, like myself and my service uh, backstopping you, calling the shots, giving you the market timing and steering you away from the big risks. And believe me, there are plenty of big risks out there, plenty of con men out there plenty of investment buyer uh, investment uh, newsletters who've never done an ounce of research in their lives. They're just pure marketing organizations. Probably 99% of all the newsletters out there are just like that. So um, uh, yeah, let us uh, be the backup for you to enter this market. It trades like water. Uh, setting up an account in Coinbase is the easiest thing in the world to do. And in my book, which the buyers will get, uh, it shows you exactly how to open up a Coinbase account. Um, okay, uh, let's see, any other questions? Uh, okay. Um, is it possible a crypto or is, is it possible to inherit a crypto? And the answer is yes, but only if you inherit the password and the ID. Uh, so if you're going to pass on your crypto to future generation, make sure you have your ID and password in your will. Um, okay, da, 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 looking at other questions here. Uh, okay, 